Source. This is News Point at 11. Now on News Point, an explosion rattles downtown Nashville, Tennessee on Christmas morning. Right then, boom, the bomb went off. Police officers put their own lives on the line to evacuate nearby buildings as an RV played a warning minutes before it exploded. These officers didn't care about themselves. They didn't think about that. They cared about the citizens of Nashville. And Nashville police now believe this was an intentional bombing. It damaged much of that area and people who live there are left wondering who did this and why. We have a lot to get to tonight, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Kelly Rinke. This is what we know at this hour. That explosion sent three people to the hospital. All of them are expected to be okay. It also damaged at least 40 buildings. This RV is the center of this investigation tonight. Police say it was parked in downtown overnight. This morning, officers were called to the scene for a report of shots fired. When they got there, they heard a recording saying a potential bomb would detonate within 15 minutes. The officers immediately began knocking on doors and evacuating uh, residents here, not knowing if the, uh, the bomb was going to detonate immediately. 30 minutes later, that RV exploded. Nashville's mayor says this was a deliberate bomb. There were no known threats to the city before this act. Law enforcement officials say authorities have found human remains near the blast site, but they don't know if they were connected to the blast. Investigators are still working to figure out who is responsible for this, and they have not revealed a motive. This has not been an easy year for Nashville. You may remember in March, a series of tornadoes ripped through the city. 25 people were killed. The tornadoes destroyed entire neighborhoods. Look at this. And on top of that, we're in the middle of a pandemic. Also tonight, a bitter cold Christmas in central Indiana. Meteorologist David James has a first look at our weather of 40 forecast. forecast. Hey, David. Hey, Kelly. Yes, uh, ho, ho, holy cow. It was cold out there today. And this ranks as one of the coldest uh, Christmas days ever. Only 15. That was it for the high temperature. Now, if we're just talking about the uh, high temperature today, uh, here's how it stacks up. 15. Well, that's the lowest uh, since 1985 when it was down to seven. Well, the high temperature was seven and our 15 ranks as the sixth coldest ever Christmas for that maximum temperature. And we've still got the cold temperatures and we've still got a bit of a wind out there. As you see the flags at the uh, car wash up on Keystone, 16 degrees with a north southwest wind at nine miles per hour. So wind chill, it's feeling like nine. Uh, the snow flurries and snow showers still going on in the Great Lakes, but for the most part, it is headed to the moved off to the east and we'll see clearing skies tonight. Uh, that'll let it get pretty cold again, but that will also let the sunshine come through during the day tomorrow and we'll see quite a dramatic uh, rise in the temperature through the day tomorrow. So up to about 38 tomorrow afternoon after we start only in the teens in the morning. Kelly. All right, David, thank you so much. And we're continuing our coverage tonight of a Carmel doctor who died after testing positive for COVID-19. She documented her time while receiving treatment at IU Health North and posted videos on social media. As Fox 59's Courtney Spinelli explained, she said she did not receive proper care because of her race. Now IU Health is launching an external review to look at how staff handled her case. She was a doctor that really fought for her patients. Dr. Susan Moore of Carmel died Sunday after testing positive for COVID-19 last month. During her battle, she shared videos about her treatment for COVID-19 at IU Health North. This is the second worst day here. This posted more than two weeks before she died on December 20th. Dr. Moore alleged she was not given proper care during her treatment. She says it's because she's black. This is how black people get killed. Moore's son says she spent eight days at IU Health North. When you send them home and they don't know how to fight for themselves. During that time, she posted that the staff tried to discharge her as she was begging for more testing and medication to help ease her pain. He said, ah, oh, you don't need it. You're not even short of breath. I said, yes, I am. I was crushed. He made me feel like I was a drug addict. And he knew I was a physician. She says her symptoms improved a bit and the hospital sent her home. Then less than 12 hours later, she posted she was being treated again at a different hospital. I put forward and I maintain if I was white, I wouldn't have to go through that. A friend of Dr. Moore says she suffered from an inflammatory disease and she wonders had she received treatment sooner, could this outcome have been different? 
She says it hurt her heart to see her friend suffering. Being a person of color as well, like, oh my gosh, if she, being a doctor and being knowledgeable of the system, can't get the care that she needs, that's disheartening for others. IU Health's president responded Thursday night saying he doesn't think the hospital failed on technical aspects of Dr. Moore's care. But says, quote, I am concerned, however, that we may not have shown the level of compassion and respect we strive for in understanding what matters most to patients. In Indianapolis, Courtney Spinelli, Fox 59 News. Now, Morse's son says her cause of death was pneumonia with possible bacterial pneumonia. IU Health also writing in that statement Thursday night, a diverse panel of healthcare and diversity experts will conduct a thorough review of her case. They say their organization is committed to equity and they will continue to seek regular improvements on what they say, quote, has been a longstanding societal issue. We will, of course, continue following the story and bring you additional updates. New coronavirus restrictions on bars and restaurants in Fisher started today. The new public health order says these businesses must close to indoor dining between 10 p.m. and 5 a.m. This will last through January 8th. A new rule starts Monday for the travelers to the U.S. from the United Kingdom. Anyone flying that route must test negative for the coronavirus within three days of departure. This is a response to a new strain of the virus found in the U.K. Every Friday, David Josie and his wife strike a gong on Monument Circle. They're remembering the lives lost to this this year to the coronavirus. Each time the gong rings, it honors 1,000 people. Today, they hit it more than 300 times. It is important to, to let everyone know that their life is important and their loved ones' lives are not forgotten, that we're there in support of them and in support of their loved ones. More than 329,000 Americans have died of coronavirus since March. That includes more than 7,000 Hoosiers. Congress is getting ready to return to Capitol Hill on Monday to work on coronavirus relief and government funding. President Trump has not signed the $900 billion relief package Congress passed earlier this week. He's asking lawmakers to increase stimulus checks to $2,000 and eliminate what he calls wasteful spending on foreign aid. Congress will meet Monday on potential changes to the bill. Now, without the president's signature, there's no guaranteed relief and the government will shut down on Tuesday. Two months after a shooting claimed the life of this IU student and Franklin Central High School graduate, his family is speaking with Fox 59 about what happened. Jason Williams says his son Ethan always wanted to visit New York City. He finally got that chance and never made it home. As Fox 59's Courtney Spinelli explains, community activists and celebrities are coming together to continue Ethan's legacy. And it all starts right here in Indianapolis. You know, when life gets hard, just hang in there. We feel as if something was stolen from us, uh, <clears throat> but not just us, uh, our city. An irreplaceable void fills the hearts of the Williams family this Christmas. Ethan never, never made it inside. In October, IU student Ethan Williams was struck and killed by a stray bullet on his first ever trip to New York City, something he dreamed of since he was a child. He was just a really well-rounded, really neat, big-hearted kid. He didn't smile. Refused to engage in, uh, in anything that would be close to violence. This year, his family knows their biggest wish. It's not Ethan. That's what we want is one that will never come true. But I think, to be honest, this is the next best thing. A group of skateboarders approached Williams saying they want to name Indianapolis's first proposed skate park in the heart of the city after his son. I instantly said, you know what? I don't, I don't know anybody or anything about this, but I'll, I'll break my legs trying to make it happen for Ethan and for you guys. Ethan's dad says he made it his mission in life to help better the community for the youth, even serving on Mayor Hogsett's Youth Leadership Council. His application piece centered around the idea that um, kids in the city uh, needed more green space um, to play in. That would that was safe and well lit. And Jason Williams says he hopes now they can push forward Ethan's vision, benefiting generations to come. He wanted cities to be a better better place for kids and youth. Mayor Hogsett, the NFL Referees Union, just a few backing the effort. But perhaps one of the project's biggest advocates, Ethan's skateboarding idol. If Indianapolis decides to do a skate park, 
which they should. They should absolutely name it after Ethan in his honor, and that will be his legacy. And he deserves that. Tony Hawk! Oh, he sure did. Look at that. Yeah, I love these skateboard guys. The group is working to raise donations to make the skate park a haven for kids from all socioeconomic backgrounds to come together as one. We're trying. Uh, we have a lot of money to raise, and uh, I've never done anything like this. But if somehow his legacy moves forward because of this, if I can pull out any little bit of silver lining, I think this is it. In hopes that his son's name on the skate park will be a reminder of the good he left in the world for years to come. I just wish he could know about these things. I so wish that this could have happened without Ethan needing to lose his life, that he could have just been a part of it, becoming a thing. Reporting in Indianapolis, Courtney Spinelli, Fox 59 News. Gosh, that father has so much strength. Your heart really goes out to him around the holidays. William says uh, oh, the only part of this project is funded by a grant. The rest will be raised through donations. Anyone interested in learning more about it can find that information in this story on fox59.com. Law enforcement and first responders across the nation are on the job this Christmas Day. Police say crime does not stop just because the calendar reads December 25th. For Lawrence Police Captain Tracy Cantrell, this holiday was slower than years past, but the officers are still out there ready to protect and serve. You still have the same, you know, responses that you would normally any other holiday. It does not change the job. The job's still the same. We'll st we still take the same runs and we still react the same way. With little to no runs, Captain Cantrell spent the majority of his shift spreading holiday cheer and wishing residents a Merry Christmas. Love that. Still ahead on News Point at 11, the Bottle Works District just got a new tenant, the business that opened up on Christmas Day. And a five-year-old is spreading Christmas cheer, how he's bringing joy to some Hoosier heroes. Well, hang on, just one more night of these really chilly temperatures and then a big warming trend coming our way over the weekend. It's still down around 10 with a wind chill near zero tonight, but 38 tomorrow and 47 on Sunday. We'll check the whole seven day outlook coming up.
Another business just opened in the Bottle Works District downtown. The major development project now houses the Living Room Theater's first Indiana location. It will show independent art house and form films as well as blockbusters. This theater is just part of phase one of the Bottle Works development project. I'm, I'm very excited that they did put a theater here in Bottle Works and just the location. The neighborhood's turning around. They're turning around everything on this side of town. So I think it was, it was, a, great, it was a great place to put a theater. More businesses will open in the Bottle Works District next year. I love this story. I think this is my favorite one today. A five-year-old in Fort Wayne helped spread a little joy to veterans in the hospital this Christmas. Tucker Rose started collecting cards and writing letters on Veterans Day. He and his dad set up a special mailbox to help collect them. On Christmas Eve, get this, they dropped off nearly 2,000 cards and letters to vets and staff at the Fort Wayne Hospital. The nurses were so grateful, and the one thing they mentioned is that you know, some of those veterans don't have any more family. They don't have any family. They have, you know, been kind of detached from their family because of their hospitalization. And that card may be just that bright spot that they need. Due to delays in the mail, Tucker and his dad think even more cards and letters will be delivered after Christmas. Isn't that so sweet? I love that. A little holiday cheer. Hey, David. All right. What are we going to expect for the next week ahead? Well, it looks like we'll get back to average temperatures. We were 20 or 25 degrees below average for the past day or so, but I think we'll be warming up from that quite a bit right this weekend. Now, of course, we had a little bit of snow here and that weather system got going a little bit more. They had uh, four or five inches of snow over on Heinz Field in Pittsburgh where the Colts will play on Sunday and it'll be on at one o'clock on CBS4, but the cold air will still be there. The snow is, will be long gone, but pretty cold.